Hello and welcome back. If this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in transporter videos, you're in the right place. So today I'm following on from my interior modifications video by doing the exterior. Some of them are extremely practical and some just look cool. The first one we've got is the wind deflector. The wind deflector not only improves the look, because I personally do believe that it does, but it also provides added benefit. So on a wet day, if you go to a drive through and you've got your window open or something like that, rain just drops straight from the window down onto the, the trim inside. And it's well known that if these switches inside here get wet, they don't work and you've got to replace them. So having this wind deflector, it's just going to keep that rain away from dropping down in there. If you're sleeping in the vehicle, it also gives you that additional benefit that you can actually keep your windows open. So keeping the air, good airflow in the vehicle when you're sleeping in it, it just allows that moisture to get out. So having the windows dropped, but still not allowing any rainwater or anything to get into it, really good. Really well priced as well, as far as body modifications are concerned. This should definitely be on the top of your list. I do know most of them already have it. And if you haven't, there's a good reason that most people already do. So next, staying with the doors, the additional door strip. So the door strip goes on the inside of your door. Is it an internal modification or an exterior? I think it's a bit of both. But the additional door strip just goes on the inside of the door here. So when it shuts, Sounds like a golf, apparently. Does it? Don't really know. What you've got to be careful of with these, don't buy cheap ones, because there are loads and loads of cheap ones on there on your Amazons and your Ebays and things like that. I, for this one, I definitely recommend going to a reputable uh, transporter aftermarket parts dealer, such as Transporter HQ or somebody like that. If you get the wrong size, it can actually prevent the door from closing properly. So if the door doesn't close properly, it doesn't seal. And then if you're washing the vehicle, you can actually get the water from which you're washing the vehicle with coming inside and making a bit of a mess internally. So spend a little bit extra. I mean, when I say a little bit extra, they don't cost much anyway, but nice little mod you can do there and just makes it sound better. In addition, with the sound editing you've already done from the interior mods, look at that. Dead as a dodo. See what I did though. Let's have a move around the front and have a look what we've got at the front. So around here, on mine, I've got the Sportline front bumper, which includes the splitter at the bottom, but unfortunately I had an argument with a pheasant and lost. So that's currently being repaired. But the bumper not only provides better appearance, it also gives you additional visibility in the daylight running lights. Uh, not all the bumpers come with this, but this one's got the daylight running lights, and I personally feel it does provide that benefit. Also, lower down on the Sportline kit, you've got the fog lights down here. Speaking of visibility lights, the Transporter is notorious for actually having very, very poor candlelight bulbs. These have not got the proper upgraded LEDs but I do have the LED bulbs in them the best option which to get something on the shopping list for the future is the transporter HQ v3s so one day soon I will get those also something else for the shopping list in the future which you've probably seen a lot of people have done is these grills here now as you can see that badge is not standard here these grills, as far as I can see, have just been painted. Now, what I want to do is change that. Uh, probably going to stay with the black, I would have thought, but I am considering another option. You can see a lot of them, transporters have these strips here, uh, and they've color coded them to give a bit of color to the vehicle. Uh, but I intend on changing that and also keeping in line here because uh, that's obviously very map where the rest of the vehicle is gloss so I'm going to do something with that in the future uh, the lower splitter down here if you've seen previously is a kind of a silvery grey um, so maybe something along those lines up here don't know still thinking about it 
So back to the side of the vehicle, other than the wheels, which uh, obviously a lot of people change, but there's going to be a completely separate video on that coming soon. The suspension. So here I've got the Cobra Springs, as you might have seen in the previous video, which I think is a 55 millimeter drop. Now, a lot of people like to see them sitting very low. Personally, as far as I'm concerned, I like a bit more of a, a ground clearance because some of the beach car parks, which I go to, uh, there's quite a few humps and bumps. And if I was sitting very, very close, then it's not really going to help me out. A good upgrade to do. Um, you can get coilovers, um, which is set up perfectly for your van for the types of wheels which you have, uh, the size of the wheels and, and what you're doing for it. Because obviously, don't forget, there's different carrying weights uh, of these transporters. Something which could kind of bridge that gap between looking super, super cool and super, super low and then being able to raise the height is something which low down transporters do, which is the air ride suspension. I'm sure you've seen that. If you're watching these videos, you've probably seen the really, really low videos, which are on air. You can raise and lower it to suit your taste. So if you're parked up, you can completely slam it to the ground. Your spoilers, your splitters will be touching the ground practically. But then when you want to drive it, you raise the suspension and off you go. So maybe in the future, might actually be something to consider doing because that would definitely give me the best of both worlds. But that is a lot of money. But in the meantime, my Cobra Springs with 55 millimeter drop, I like it. Yeah, it does look a little bit high, but like I say, the uh, car parks which I go on, a little bit rough terrain, I think they'll do for now. Sticking with the side, sidebars. So on mine, I've got a sidebar and they just look better. Personally, I think that they, they just add something extra to the vehicle. Uh, they do improve the, the look of it. Uh, and they also do give you a bit more protection. I've got the mud flaps, uh, which are here, which I think again is something else which uh, everybody should be doing. But you can just protect the underside from stones and debris being flicked up from the wheels and things, and you can protect the sills. Also, in the event of a, a low speed accident with a bollard or a rock or something like that, these sidebars are gonna protect the sills and prevent it from doing much damage. I've also heard about limited, and I do say limited protection as far as the, the side's concerned, a, a bit of a side impact can prevent a bit of bodywork damage here. Uh, so obviously you've got, this one is the, I don't know actually what you call it, uh, but it's rounded, rounded sill. Uh, I like the trapezoid ones and you can also get steps so the steps come out and it also helps shorter people little kids etc to be able to step on the step and then get in it's really starting to rain now let's get around the back of the van so starting low bumper protector so on here I've got a bumper protector which is actually quite a thick protector and as you can see, it's extremely well used. Uh, it's certainly done its job with scratches and scrapes and things like that, uh, with getting things into the vehicle. And I think it's something which you should have. Something which I'm gonna be replacing on mine because this is now definitely past its uh, usable life. It looks rubbish uh, and definitely needs changing. Um, but it just, it protects, protects the bumper. And if you go for a, uh, a carbon look or a, a gloss or a different color it enhances it as well so definitely a bumper protector get that on the shopping list and it'll improve the looks and provide protection at the same time tow bar i think for a transporter owner this is something which you should definitely be considering uh, not only is it useful for towing caravans and trailers and things like that but it's also really useful for carrying bikes Obviously with the vehicle being quite high, there's not that many people who actually put bikes on the roof. And this is an ideal way of putting a, uh, a two lay bike carrier on the back or something like that, something which I've got. Uh, or you can actually use the two lay um, cargo boxes. You can pop them on the back for a bit of an additional storage. But a tow bar just comes in really useful for those extra bits and pieces which you, you need to be carrying around with you. So I've got the detachable tow bar and because of that, I obviously just take it off when I don't need it. Uh, it's never nice when you 
have a tow bar on the back of your vehicle and you hit another vehicle it does do a bit of damage not that i've ever done that but i know people who have because they've not remembered that they've got the tow bar on there so i remove mine when i'm not using it and it keeps the the rear of the vehicle looking nice and clean well apart from that protector so let's move up a little bit roof spoiler so as far as a roof spoiler is concerned, it doesn't really pose any purpose other than actually looking pretty cool. And this one's quite understated uh, and it looks pretty good. Now, the problem which you can have with uh, roof spoilers is if you want to put a bike rack on the back, these won't work. So you do need to get a different style. Uh, there's lots and lots of different styles out there. Now, one of the popular ones um, which people do buy for when they are using the, the bike carriers is one which kind of comes up and along and then up and along and then it it looks as though it should be on a, a high performance vehicle uh, because it is really kind of out there. Uh, but there's lots of different options available. And again, it doesn't really add anything. It's not adding damn force. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a van, but it does improve the luck and it's uh, something which I wouldn't really be without solar panel so as you can see i've got the semi-flexible solar panel on here uh, you might have actually seen the installation video which i did of it now this is something which is obviously permanently on the van uh, i don't have to worry about taking it off putting it back on again uh, it is always there i have seen there's quite a lot of people at the moment going for the portable ones and certainly not knocking you for that uh, but i certainly know that for me it'd be a bit of a hassle trying to remember uh, to connect it up, making sure that I've got space for it, carrying it around. Uh, this is just always there. Uh, and from the morning when the sunlight comes out to the evening when the sun goes away, if the battery needs a top up, it's going to provide it. It doesn't have any bulk, it doesn't add any weight. And yeah, personal preference, a roof mounted panel has been good for me. So next up, roof bars. Now I've got the Volkswagen ones uh, fitted to this vehicle and personally I use them for carrying surfboards, things such as that. And you can also be using them for carrying a uh, roof box. So a, maybe a two-lay roof box or one of the Halfords ones or something like that. Just so you can carry some extra load. Because if you've got one of the transporters with a full conversion and the seats are right at the back and you've got to carry everything in the, the middle luggage space, it can get a little bit cramped. So putting a roof box on the top of the vehicle can help take away some of the luggage which you've got inside. So again, it's just another good addition, good exterior modification, which I know a lot of them already have. Uh, but if you haven't, there's a couple of reasons for doing so. The final part of the roof is the DAB GPS FM AM antenna. Now, the standard ones in the T6 come in the wing mirror and it's just rubbish. It's well renowned for being rubbish. So, nice cheap upgrade. I think it's only about 30 quid. Shark fin aerial on the top of the vehicle and look cool actually. It actually looks quite cool, but more importantly, it improves the signal and definitely something which I, I wouldn't have been doing without good little mod so there you go several exterior modifications there if you haven't seen the interior modifications have a look at that here or if you want to have a look at other bits and pieces which i've done to my van you've got that here thanks for watching take care hope to see you soon